And Kirchhoff current law says the algebraic sum of all the currents entering a node, a node is really a junction must equal zero. So the word node here is a junction that connects two or more elements. So for example, you notice from the examples that I did, I have a, actually I'll go back to this one. Where was it? There's a problem here. This problem. This is a junction. So what you have, you have this junction here. I'm talking about this circle. The top is the node here. The junction has a current coming down here. We have another one coming down. And we have the source here. We had a current going in, which we calculated that I, 0.325. We, ca we calculate each one of these currents, I sub 1, 2, and 3, that was 0 0.096, 0 0.16, and 0 0.069. What this was, all of the current entering this node, this is a node. Again, a node, a junction, or a point that connects to a more element. So if you take all the currents entering that node, should equal to zero. Well, notice some are entering, some are leaving. So you got to define some of them, are either the ones going in as positive and the ones leaving as negative, or vice versa. So I can say, well, 0 0.326 is going, or 25 is going in, plus this is leaving, that's a negative 0 0.096, plus 0 0.096, the current, this is leaving, negative 0 0.16, plus this is leaving negative 0 0.069. If you add them, that should be a zero. Usually the way I rewrite that, instead of the algebraic sum of all the currents entering the node equals zero, I go the current I in equals I out. The current going into that node should equal the current leaving that node. What's going into that node? 0 0.324 or 25. What's leaving that node? 0 0.096 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.069. So that's one of the laws called Kirchhoff current law, the algebraic sum of all the currents. So if you know, in this case, if you know three of them, you can find the fourth one. So if I know this, this, and that, I can find what this one is by adding these values. Now we also have Kirchhoff voltage law beside the current law. Some people call it Kirchhoff. That's called KVL. And we, we looked at that one, we used it. And this one says the algebraic sum. Of all the voltages. Some books, instead of the word voltages, they'll use potential differences around any closed loop.
It has to be a closed loop in a circuit is zero. Again, I'll go back to what we did early today. That was one of the examples that we did. Remember this one? Resistors and series. We had a voltage source of 5 volts here. We have resistor 1, which is 10 ohms. And we have resistor 2, which is 7 ohms. We have resistor 3, which is 8 ohms. We calculated the current through that and the voltage across each one. Of, oh, we didn't do the voltage. We found the current to be 0.2. So the voltage here, what's 0.2 times 10? 2 volts, because the current's going this way. The voltage here, 0.2 times 7, because the current was 0.2. It was 0.2 amps, the current through it. So 0.2 times 7, that's 1.4. And the voltage here, 0.2 times 8, 1.6 volts. Kirchhoff voltage law, I mean, uh, yep, voltage law says if you take all the voltages in a closed loop, you add them, the sum is zero. So we're going to pick a direction we're traveling. I'm going clockwise here. Notice I'm entering this one from minus to plus. See that? I'm entering minus to plus. This one plus to minus, so one has to be a negative. So it doesn't matter which one, so I'll do minus to plus to be a minus, so here we go. Let's add the voltage in the closed loop. Minus to plus, that's a minus 5. Plus to minus, that's plus 2. Plus to minus, that's plus 1.4. And plus to minus, that's plus 1.6. Does that equal to 0? Yes, it does. Sum of the voltage in a closed loop. If you go around the path in a closed loop, the result is 0. This is actually, these two laws help us come out, figure out why when resistors in series, we add them. When they're in parallel, we do one over that. And I'll show you that. I'll use Kirchhoff voltage law. By the way, there's another way of drawing a voltage source. That's a voltage source. That's sometimes the two lines or something like this. I just wasn't paying it. So that's another way to draw a voltage source. <clears throat> Let's say I have 10 volts. I have resistor 1, which equals 20 ohms. Resistor 2 equals 30 ohms. And resistor 3, which equals 50. And I want to find the current. Now, I know I can do what I did early today. And that is find the equivalent of these resistors and do it that way. And I can do that. But I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to use Kirchhoff voltage law. It says some of the voltages in a closed loop is zero. So here we go. This current is going, notice I drew the current going this way. So through the resistor, it's going to mark it plus to minus. And the value of this voltage is going to be Ohm's law, I times R. I is I, R is 20. That's 20 I. Whatever I is. It's going to travel this way. It's going to mark this plus to minus. The voltage here is 30 times I, which is 30 I. Continue with that plus to minus, because I'm going this way, and that's this resistor times I, that's 50 I. KVL, Kirchhoff voltage losses, if you take all the voltage in a closed loop, it should equal to zero. Let's try that. Entering minus to plus, that's a minus. 
I'm going plus to minus, that's plus. Plus to minus, that's a plus. Plus to minus, that's a plus. <coughs> 100i equals 10. What is i equal to? 0.1. I don't have to combine these resistors into one. So I solve the problem a bit differently here. Probably quicker and easier. If i is 0.1, now you know what the voltage V1. Cross resistor 1, we said it's 20 times i. 20 times 0.1. 2 volts. V2 is 30 times I. I is 0.1. 3 volts. V3 is 50 times I. I is 0.1. 50 times 0.1 is 5 volts. And when you add these voltages, 2, 3, and 5, what do you have? 10 volts. Some of the voltages in a closed loop is 0. This is negative 10. All these guys combine is plus 10 volts. Yep. This method, and you don't have to find out serious parallel and all the stuff. Where this becomes a little bit tougher there, Jonathan, I'll give you one. Remember one the example we did? Um, what was it? This one. This one. This one here, I can do it with this method. I'll just write to the guy on the top. R1 equals 220. R2 equals 250. R3 equals 100. And R4 is equal to 50. Now, if I want to do that, the other method, the one I just showed you with Kirchhoff, they go, wait a minute, there's more than one loop here. So I'm probably going to have more than one current through that circuit. Now I have no idea which way the current's going to be going. So I can go this way. I'm going to guess that I sub 1 is going to be this way. It's going to be a different current through these. I'm not sure if it's equal or not, but I'll assume it's different. So I assign currents in any direction I want to. Now, Kirchhoff voltage law, KVL, sum of the voltage in a closed loop is zero. Let me take this as a loop right here. I'm going to highlight this. <coughs> I'm going to highlight on the inside. Can you see it on the screen? Does it show up? I'm going to travel this way. I'm going clockwise, like the direction of this. Let's try that. This is 11, or minus to plus, that's a negative 11, right? As you're traveling this way, you mark in this what? Plus to minus. You mark in this plus to minus. You mark in this plus to minus. Well, because you're entering the source from the minus side. Oh. See this minus? That's a negative there. Dominic. This one, through the resistor, is always going to mark it plus to minus. So I can reverse that source, put the plus on the bottom, the minus on the top, then there'll be a plus here. So, yeah. so a negative 11, because I'm entering the, the negative end of it, plus, what's the voltage drop here? Ohm's law says V equals I times R, right? I is what? I sub 1, R is 220. That's 220, I sub 1. It's this times this. This one, 
I'm entering the plus. 250, what's the current coming down? That's where it's tricky a little bit there. What's the current through this coming down? I1 minus I sub 2. Because this one coming down, Jonathan, this one going up. Notice okay. direction backward. This current, if you continue, it's coming down, but this one is going up. So the net result is the difference between them. I need to finish my loop. It has to be a closed loop. I'm not closing it. I got to go all the way back to here, right? So now I'm going to deal with this one. And this will be 50 times what? What's the current through that resistor? There's only one current, that's I sub 1. <coughs> Clean this one. Collect like terms. 220 plus 250 plus 50, that's 300, 520. I sub 1 minus 250 I sub 2 is equal to 11. That's one equation. Now I need another closed loop. I can use this as a closed loop, or I can do the outside as a closed loop. Come on the outside. As long as it's a closed loop, it doesn't matter which one. You don't want to use this again. You already used it. So you never want to use this again. You end up with the same equation. And if you have one equation with two unknowns, you can't solve it. So I need a different equation. So I can go either on the outside of that. I can travel this way, because it's a green marker on the outside. If I travel that direction. Here we go again. I'm going to start with this one. I'm entering the minus. That's negative 11. Going <coughs> this way. That's plus to minus. 220 times I sub 1. I'm going down this way. That becomes plus to minus here. 100 times the current through this. What's the current through that? I sub 2. Keep going to this. What's the current through this? Only I sub 1. So I did the outside. 250 as 270 I sub 1 plus 100 I sub 2 equals what? 11. And now there's my second equation. How many equations by how many unknowns? 2. If you know them, you know the current through this, the current through this, the current through that, the current through this. <coughs> so I'll take the two equations, go to the side, and do some math on them and solve them. Now I'm going to use the elimination method, which means multiply this by 2.5. If I multiply this equation by 2.5, let's see what will happen. What is 2.5 times 270? Six seventy-five. plus 250 I sub 2 equals 2.5 times 11, 27.5. I spoke too soon about my battery's dead. Can you see it now? That's the brightest I can get it. That says to have to dim on at me. So let's add the two equations. These two will cancel each other out. 
520 plus 675, 1195 I sub 1 equals 27.5 plus 11, 38.5. What is I sub 1? 38.5 divided by 1195. 0 0.0322. That is the current through R sub 1 and R sub 4. The current through R sub 4, 0 0.0322. Now again, if you know I sub 1, you can grab one of those equations solve for I sub 2. Doesn't matter which one. So 270 times I sub 1, I sub 1 is what? 0 0.0322 plus 100 I sub 2 equals 11. Eight point six nine nine. One hundred I sub two equals eleven minus that number, which is two point three zero one. What is I sub two? Point zero two three zero. I sub 2 is the current through R sub 3. And what about the current through R sub 2? We say it's the difference between them. It's I sub 1 minus I sub 2. So I sub 1 is 0 0.0322 minus 0 0.0230. Point zero zero nine two. Let's see if these are correct. So this is R sub one, the current through it, R sub four, R sub three, and R sub two. We did that problem earlier today, a different method. Which problem was this one? That's this one. So let's see what my answers were. The current through R sub 1, 0 0.0322, 0 0.0322. The current through R sub 4, 0 0.0322. The current, what is the, the current through R sub 2? See that? 0 0.0092. And the current through R sub 3.0230. Same exact answer. So normally that's how I do them, using Kirchhoff current and voltage. <coughs> As the problem gets really ugly, this might be much easier than doing it what we did early. Especially when you have different branches and go, oh, what do I do now? So let's take this example. I have a 15 volts. And I have a 100 ohm in the bottom. I got a hundred ohm on the side here. I got another voltage source here, the plus here and the minus there of nine volts. You know, I don't like the fact they're all 100. Let me change them because I want you to know which one I'm talking about. 
let's make this 200 and let's make that 300. So you'll know when I say the voltage cross the 100 ohm, which one I'm talking about. And here's the question. Find this current, we'll call it I sub 1. Find this current, we'll call it I sub 2. And find this current in this direction, I sub 3. I know I sub 1 equals I sub 3. Why? Notice the current comes in, there's no way to split. No way. It's going to come up there, continue to go up, and come down this way till it gets to that junction, then we'll split. But when you're coming down this way, through that resistor, there's no way to exit. So these two will have to be equal to each other. So let me assign current. Again, I have, it looks like I have two loops here. Let me assign this current and this current. I'm going to call them I sub X and I sub Y. Let's take a closed loop here. Which one do you want to use for the first one? Do you want to use this one? Going this way? Again, I'm traveling clockwise with the current. This is my closed loop. Yep, you can see it. Let's do KVL. Sum of the voltage in a closed loop is zero. I'll start with the source. I'm entering the minus here. That's a minus 15. There's nothing on the top, so don't worry about the top. Come down this way. I'm going to enter this plus to minus in that direction. I'm traveling this way. So that'd be a plus 200 times. I'm going plus to minus. That means my current's coming down. What is the current coming down here? through this one. I sub X minus I sub Y. Good. Because this is coming down, this is going up. Continue your path through the 100. And what's the current through the 100? Only I sub X. Continue back to your source, that's your closed loop. We're done. All of that is equal to zero. So clean that equation, 15 equals 300 I sub X minus what, 200 I sub Y? Now let's take another closed loop. Maybe I'll do the right side instead of the outside. I can do the whole outside or just the right side. So I'll stick with the right side, no reason. I'll use this. That's my other closed loop. And I'm going to travel with the, with the current, so clockwise. So I'll begin, I'll begin with this source. Notice I'm entering this source from the plus end of it, not the minus here. See that Dominic, you asked early is always minus? I'm entering this from the plus, that's a plus nine. Continue with this, that's what? I'm entering this in this direction, that's plus to minus. 300 times the current, the current going down, which is what? I sub y. And I'm going to come up here, I'm going to enter this from plus to minus. So now we've got to be careful. Notice I'm traveling this way. 
in this lube here, I'm going upward, not down through that resistor. I'm going up. So what is the current going up? What is the current of this going up here? I sub Y minus I sub X. Everyone see why I reverse them? The current going upward. Up, because I'm at this plus to minus. This current pushing up, this is down, so the difference between them. Clean that. Negative 200 I sub X plus what? 500 I sub Y. And now I get what? Two equations by two unknowns. I'm done with physics, I'm done with circuits. What I have to deal with is two equations by two unknowns. Let's solve them. So let me take the two equations, put them on the next page. That's one of them. I can multiply this equation by 2 and this is by 3 to cancel I sub X. If I multiply this by 2, I will have what? 2 times 3? 600 I sub X minus 400 I sub Y equals 2 times 15, 30. 3 times the minus, that's negative 600 I sub X plus 1500 I sub Y 27. And let's add them. When you add them, gone 1100 I sub Y equals 57 I sub Y is equal to it. <clears throat> 57 divided by 1100. 0. 0.0518. If you know I sub Y, now you can grab either equation, doesn't really matter which one. Minus 200 I sub Y, in place of I sub Y, put 0. 0.0518. Three hundred I sub X minus ten point three six four three hundred I sub X equals twenty five point So I sub X is going to be 0 0.0845 amps. So now we have all the answers. You want to know what I sub 1? I sub 1 is I sub X. which is 0 0.0845. You want to know what I sub 3? I sub 3 is still I sub X. <coughs> you want to know what I sub 2? I sub 2 is I sub Y. And then ask for the current Oh, they did ask for it. They're saying, what's the current coming down here to? Um, 
We'll call this Isaac 4. Isaac 4, now if you look at it, it's coming down. They define it as coming down. So it's Isaac X, that's the one coming down. Take away from it Isaac Y. If they made it going up, would be I sub Y minus I sub X. I have these numbers. I know what I sub X, I know what I sub Y, subtract them. Point zero, eight, oh, 845 minus zero five one eight, And that would be point zero three two seven. So I'm not sure if you like this method or not. I wanted to show you both methods. I don't mind this method at all, me personally. Yep, and as the problem gets really ugly, really, really ugly, that's the only way to do it. Like if I come in and say, you know what? I'm in a good mood today, let's do this. And I start doing crazy stuff for you. That becomes your only way to do it. If I came in here and I put this, again, that's a voltage source. Yeah, good luck now. Good luck. But it's not undoable. It's four equations by four unknowns. I say I'm going to define the current going this way. That's I sub 1. I'm going to define this current as I sub 2. I'm going to define this current as I sub 3. And I'm going to define this current as I sub 4. So if you understood that method, Kirchhoff voltage law, then you're in good shape. You do a loop inside this. I'm traveling in that direction, so the first one, minus the plus is minus five. Plus, I'm gonna mark this, because you, you go in this way, you're gonna mark it plus to minus, you're gonna mark this plus to minus, plus to minus. So that's plus six times I sub one. Plus, because you're going plus to minus, going this way. Four times the current down. I'm going this way, going down. Four times. What's the current down? That's I sub one minus I sub two. This minus that. This is going down. This is coming up. Let's continue. Plus nine. Notice I'm going to the right or to the left. What's the current going this way, to the left? It's I sub one minus I sub three. And now I complete, completed my closed loop right there. That should equal to zero. Six, four, 10, 19. So you clean that 19 I sub one, minus four I sub two, minus nine I sub three, equals five. That's one equation. Let's look at this loop here. I can take that loop here. Notice I drew my current going clockwise. So I'm going through this plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. I'm going this way. So this would be a plus six. I'm entering the plus end of it, not the minus. Here, I enter the minus. I'm entering the plus. That's plus six, not a minus. We get this one. And I'm going from right to left. What's the current from right to left? I got I sub two pushing this way and I sub four pushing backward. Current 
Continue with that. I'm going up now through the forearm. Up. What's the current up? I got this one pushing up, but this one pushing down. Continue with this one now, the last one. And the only current through that is I sub 2. Clean that equation. Negative 4 I sub 1. 4 and 4, that's 8. 8 and 5 is 13. Negative 4 I sub 4. That's my other equation. I have two equations by how many unknowns? Four. One, two, three, and four. I need two more equations. If you have four unknowns, you better have four equations. I can go this way. Travel this way. That's a closed loop. I'm going clockwise. Notice my arrow is going this way. So I'm going to hit this one plus to minus. I'm going to hit this resistor plus to minus plus to minus, the source minus to plus. So if I do that, I'll start with the source minus to plus, that's a minus three. I'm going this way, to the right, here to the right, that's plus nine. What is the current to the right? I got I three to the right, I sub one to the left. This one pushing to the right, this one pushing to the left. The difference between them is to the right. I want the current coming down now through this one. What's the current down? I sub three minus I sub four. This is going up. This is coming down. I want it down. And the last one is the eight. There's only one current going through that, and that's I sub three. You add all the voltage and the closed loop is zero. Clean it. 9i sub 1. We have 9, 7, and 8. 8 and 7 is 15 and 9, 24. i sub 3. Minus 7i sub 4 is equal to 3. That's my third equation. One more, then I'll go and solve it. And the last one, maybe I'll use purple here, pink, whatever it is. I'll go, there's a closed loop right there. I'm traveling clockwise again. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus in this direction. So I'll begin with the eight here. That's plus, 8 times I sub 4. That's the only thing going through is I sub 4. Now I get to the 7 here. And what is the current going up? I'm going up here. It's I sub 4 minus I sub 3. Continue with that. That's the 4 here. And I want the current now to the right. Going from here to there. From here to the right. I sub 4 is going that direction. I sub 2 is backward. Clean it. Negative 4 I sub 2. Negative 7 I sub 3. Plus 19 I sub 4 is equal to 0. You have 4 equations by 4 unknowns. Now, these are my four equations. Can I solve these four equations by four unknowns? You can. I can. I cheat here. I get a calculator that can pack these numbers and will tell me what the answer. I can do them using algebra. Or... 
I can cheat. Cheating is good here. Four equations by four unknowns. I'm going to write the coefficient of each one. 19, negative 4, negative 9. I don't have I sub 4. That's a 0 for I sub 4. And the answer is 5. The next one, I sub 1 is negative 4. I sub 2 is 13. There is no I sub 3 is 0. I sub 4 is negative 4. And the answer is 6. The next one, I sub 1 is 9. I sub 2 is not there, 0. I sub 3 is 24. I sub 4 is negative 7. And the answer is 3. And the last one, I sub 1 is not here. Notice it's missing. That's 0. I sub 2 is negative 4. I sub 3 is negative 7. 19, and my answer is 0. And now I hit solve. And here are my answers. I sub 1 is 0 0.402. I sub 2, 0.628, I think if I can read that, there's a strip that's missing. I sub 3, 0 0.014, and I sub 4, 0.137. This probably will take me 10 minutes to do them by hand. But thank goodness for the calculator there. I got a built-in functions called simultaneous that will solve a simultaneous equation. That's on the 86. If you have the 89, this will do anything. I collect calculators. I get the 92, which is a color, actually in color, beautiful. I just didn't take it out of the box yet. I had it for almost six months. This actually has a whole menu driven Notice the equation, you can write in it. This actually can get crazy with it. Uh, F3, F18 to clear everything. But you end up with menus, whatever you want to do, you see this? It's like a whole computer there. Or if you go to mode, and you can change all the setting and all that on it. This actually has a calendar on it too. You can put appointments on it. I'll quit. I mean, yep. To get out of this, quit. Notice this one you want to do. It does crazy finance. If you want to do finance, you want to do graph. You want an appointment. alarm clock and everything the day of the test Monday okay. so next week gonna have lots of exams Are we, gonna have homework next week? Uh, we might be done with the homework actually I'll be covering the last chapter I'm sure tomorrow I'll answer questions between tomorrow answering questions in the lab on Friday probably cover the last chapter you'll have Tuesday to ask questions on it You'll have Wednesday test on chapter four, then the final exam on Thursday. So the last week you'll have three exams, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Boy, aren't you lucky. We should have one take home. You can't take it home after you're done with it. <laughs> no, you know why? Because you always miss it. <laughs>